when I went to college, I thought I was going to study biology, but I was also interested in environmental science, and I started taking some geology courses. And the thing that really, really intrigued me about geology was the time scales, the amount of time uh, that a lot of these processes take. Paleontology was a really great way of combining my earlier interest in biology with my newfound interest in geology. In particular, I was really interested in the early evolution of animals, and the fossil record, of course, is the way to directly study that. The reason that I study trilobites is because they're really useful for the kinds of questions I'm interested in asking. A trilobite is an arthropod. Arthropods uh, are the group that contain insects, crustacea, spiders, um, but trilobites are completely extinct. Um, they lived in the ocean, they lived all over the world, and so they're preserved all over the world. And they live for a really long time, they're around for 250 million years. Trilobites are one of the first types of animals to show up in large numbers in the fossil record. The reason for this is their exoskeleton had a lot of minerals in it, and they preserve really well. So one really cool thing about trilobites is that like insects, they molted throughout their lifetime. And all of those molts are preserved in the fossil record, which means we can actually go back and look at how they changed during development, how they changed during their lifetime. And that gives us a lot of information about uh, how changes during development might influence long-term evolution. For my research, I'm really interested in how species evolve, how and when species evolve. Part of that uh, is just reconstructing the tree of life of trilobites, and part of that is looking at how specific physical characteristics change over time. So one of the methods that I use to describe physical characteristics in trilobites is geometric morphometrics. And basically what we do is we pick a bunch of points that overall represent the shape of the part that we're interested in. So for example, one of those points might be the place where the eye meets the rest of the exoskeleton. And that series of points together, that configuration, is a quantitative description of the shape. Researchers have uh, used verbal descriptions to compare different species, but this method lets us uh, describe those species in a quantitative way. I've done a lot of field work in Nevada and Utah, and working in the desert is great because there's very little vegetation, and you can basically just walk up a hillside and sample at different rock beds as you walk up, essentially walking through time sampling as you go. It's great being out in the field and collecting new material and discovering new things. But the same discoveries can actually happen in the museum as well, opening up old drawers and finding specimens that were collected years ago, probably for a completely different purpose, and realizing that it's the perfect thing for the study that you're working on right now.